now let's get into the first topic, which is going to be the nervous system. The nervous system is split into two categories, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Starting off with the central nervous system, CNS, which consists of your brain and spinal cord. The CNS controls the function of the rest of the body by sending signals to the peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system, PNS. The peripheral nervous system has two main systems. The somatic nervous system, which controls muscle movement, which is voluntary movement, and the autonomic nervous system, which controls other bodily functions. This is further divided into the parasympathetic rest and digest system, which works by releasing acetylcholine that binds to muscarinic receptors in the GI tract, bladder, and eyes. And this results in SLUD, which stands for salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, and digestion. And we have the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight. This releases epinephrine and norepinephrine, which act on the adrenogenic receptors. This results in an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and bronchodilation. Stimulation of beta-2 receptors in the GI tract increase glucose production to provide muscles with oxygen and energy. And this increases heart rate, heart contractility, and cardiac output, glucose, bronchodilation, and mydriasis. Moving on to neurotransmitters. So different medications could work as either agonist or antagonist on these neurotransmitter receptors. Here we can see two receptors. On the agonist side, we can see that the little buddy right there, he fits into the receptor perfectly, which then activates the receptor. On the contrary, we can see on the antagonist side that the little hexagon does not fit in the receptor and then therefore blocks the receptor, which produces no effect. Now let's get into the different types of neurotransmitters. It's very important for you to understand how these work because if you do, then you'll understand how the mechanism of action for these medications work as well. Moving on to alpha-1. When it, when agonist acts on it, it raises the blood pressure to increase the cardiac output, which makes sense. And anytime we raise the blood pressure, the heart is going to work harder, which then causes vasoconstriction. And here are some examples of that. And then the antagonist of it is, an example of it is fentolamine. Moving on to muscarinic. When you increase muscarinic, you increase SLUD, which as we went over previously, salvation, lacrimation, urination, diarrhea, and digestion. Next, we have beta-1. If an agonist acts upon it, then it's going to increase heart contractility. An example is dobutamine. And antagonist is going to decrease the heart contractility. Moving on to beta-2. An agonist is going to increase bronchodilation. An example is albuterol, while an antagonist will constrict bronchodilation. And we can remember beta-1 and beta-2 being beta-1 is going to act on the heart. So there's only, you only have one heart. So that should remind you of beta-1 equals heart. Beta-2 is going to act on the lungs. You have two lungs. Therefore, the beta-2 should remind you of lungs. A couple more neurotransmitters. We have histamine 1, H1, which is the neurotransmitter Benadryl works on. And that's for when you have an allergic reaction or any inflammation. While histamine 2 works in the gastric acid. And there are a couple medications that work on both of these neurotransmitters, which we'll be going over in a couple of classes from now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more.